Can I help you? Yes, hello. I'm Johnson, representing Konami. And I'm here to serve you papers, Mr. 10,000. Oh, I... Wait a minute, you're suing me? It seems to me you damaged a $4,000 suit during an altercation you had with my client. Wait a minute, you realize your boss attacked me, correct? <laughs> well, that will be up to the court to decide. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Frank, pull the lever. Got it. Lever. Oh. Oh, why do we even have that freaking lever? Oh. Oh. Frank, pull the other lever, you douche canoe. Huh. Huh. Okay, I'm back. I see that. Now make sure to show up to court, Mr. 10,000. I don't want to win this case too easily. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sayonara, Johnson. <clears throat> Beg your pardon, Mr. 10,000? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now that problem solved. The raptors will be fed for a week. Oh, God. Frank, we're getting rid of that other lever. That's not funny. Uh, uh, uh. What is up, my tricksters? Hope you enjoyed that skit. Did you like that impression? <laughs> well, hello, Mr. 10,000. Yeah, how was that? Not too shabby, right? Well, listen, I don't think it was too bad. <laughs> it sounds like a bad crunk impression to me, to be honest. <laughs> so, you know, the right. That's uh, that's the poison for Kuzka. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it sounds like. So that's what Johnson sounds like to me. He sounds like a bad crunk impression. So... <laughs> Just add a little bit of pompous in there, and you'll got it. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the skit. And that might not be the last time we see Johnson of the Big Five, but, you know, or maybe it will be. I don't know. I don't know. Blue might be chewing on him. I don't know. I can't hear I can't hear the, any screams or loud noises. You know, the cage is soundproofed. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you like the T-shirt I'm wearing, by the way, if you guys want one of these... Heroes Come in All Colors t-shirt. It's it's Rainbow Neos in my art style. If you guys want to get you one of these, you just check out my uh, doobly doo down there. I've got in the description, I've got a link to my Teespring. And you guys can get this and, and a whole line of other goodies. If you want to support the channel, that'd be a great way to do so. Alright. That being said, I think that uh, it's time for us to get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So, we're going to go watch heroes do what they do without breaking the bank, of course. Because, who wants to do that? And uh, then when we get to the deck profile, I will see you on the other side and we'll talk about the deck. So, as my uh, mainstream counterpart would say, it's hero time!
And there you have it, guys. That was my budget hero deck in action. You guys actually probably noticed in the replays, you saw some meta decks, uh, some Shadal Invoke, some Sky Striker. I think Sky Striker counts as meta. I mean, it's a pain in the ass to me enough to count. Uh, and a few other things, you know, some lesser known decks, but you know, you don't really get to pick what your <laughs> what your opponents play on Edo Pro. Um, so yeah. This is my budget hero deck. Um, as you guys can see, we have Isolde in the side here. This was just, uh, as a recording, it. some of the replays, uh, just to let you guys, just for transparency's sake, said I started off with like an Isolde heroes type of thing, and then I decided to go away from that area. So that's why Isolde's here on the side, just to represent some of the cards you might have saw on that didn't really get played in the replays. So, that being said, what I ended up going for, for my budget hero build, and there's going to be more to it, like obviously you guys can pick some different card choices, there's plenty of wiggle room for you to more apply to your own collection or your own taste. Uh, remember guys, most of my deck profiles are based off of my own personal card collection and what I would, and I don't steal cards from other decks unless they're no longer using them, so, you know, it's just as an example of why my decks kind of look a little weird. So without getting, with all that being said, the ultimate strategy of this budget hero deck is to go second, clear the board, and OTK. Because Sunriser is an OTK enabler, and I really let, the, like, Sunriser is, is, is the bee's knees in the hero deck. <laughs> uh, we got the one Panker Tops. Uh, I just felt like I needed more spot removal. So, and this, everybody ha probably has this card. It was a common and it's you know and frankly this card if, if you don't have to blow up it's a 26 beater uh malicious is an extender stratos you know it's stratos uh celestial is actually only in here because we can only play two malicious so the idea is to take advantage of that and maybe you have to draw it's also decent if you want to blow up a face-up spell um like if you had to get rid of like something pesky like dimensional fissure as an example um let's see here we got then we got the solid soldier and uh this guy is basically uh, another extender slash play starter. Uh, Blaze Man, uh, because polymerization is such an important card. That's why we're playing triple of the, you know, we're playing all the searchers that have searched it out. Uh, Shadow Mist, to be honest with you guys, I would I only own one Shadow Mist, so if I had my way, I'd probably go 2-2-2 two, two, and two with all the heroes. Minus, you know, a few other things. You know, that's just how I would probably do it, to be honest, so... Then we got the one Vion. This is just to send Shadow Mist or Malicious to the graveyard, or maybe Celestia if necessary. Or and uh, then we got Bubble Man, which is kind of a pseudo extender slash. Uh, this was the card I would search off of his old, but now it's more of a card that I, I just need a water more water targets. Uh, King of the Swamp water targets for fusions in the grave, as well as there is one uh, fusion monster that this is relevant for, especially. But basically, it's all that gets polymerization. Polymerization ironically now the way the hero deck really does work polymerization and the fusion spells play a much bigger role than they have in the past you know um i'm not to say that they didn't matter at all but you know like a lot of the hero decks of you know before i want to say like 2018 and back were mo you know for competitive play were mostly like dark law turbo or when super poly was a three you know you used to before they banned it and brought and brought it back, they you know the hero deck would do like rely on the Omni heroes with Super Poly. That was their one their one trick. Um, now the deck is more about polymerization thanks to Sunriser. So yeah, I, I it's, it's so it's very important. Uh, e call Rhoda, you know these guards and uh, hero lives just to just to get those heroes out and get them out of the deck and into our hand or on their field. Polymerization, linchpin of the deck, Miracle Fusion, another linchpin. Uh, Dark Hole, this is just another cheap card to get rid of the board. If you want, you can replace this with Dark Ruler no more. Uh, you know, if you or if you really have the money to throw at this, you could easily take Dark Hole out and throw like Lightning Storm if you have the money. Um, hey, Trunade, you can also take one of these out and have Harpy's Feather Duster. Hey, Trunade is basically because we do have a lot of back row based decks. Uh, hey, Trunade forces out and negates like Solemn's. 
Um, and if they don't have a card like Solemns, it forces them to use certain cards before they have a chance to really uh, have an impact. Like, for example, if you were up against an Eldritch player, you activate Hey Trunade. Well, now they have to activate those trap cards or they're not going to be able to get out their Golden Lord or anything else. And if they play the Conquistador and the Golden Lord, there's nothing for the Conquistador usually to blow up when you're doing this. So, you know, they use their card before it has any ability to be effective in the in the gameplay. Upstart, we're playing a 39 card deck. Foolish Burial, also for Malicious uh, and or Shadow Mist. Foolish just basically becomes another Rota with these, or, a, or an Extender with these cards in the deck. Monster Reborn, you know, we put monsters in the graveyard really easily, so... Triple Mass Change for, basically, as you guys know, for any of the Mask Heroes. Super Poly, this is another board wipe. Basically, we're playing, I want to say all together, eight board wiping cards between Dark Hole, Hatred Renade, and Super Poly. They just kind of serve different purposes. Um, there is a card that uh, I would recommend you guys make room for. Let me throw that in here real quick. Is this guy, if you happen to have access to him. Uh, I just didn't have access from my personal collection for this card in, in this deck, so... You know, there's that. All right, so then now we're going to go into the extra deck and uh, Mask Hero Deanne because basically we want to have the option to use Mass Change to help us dodge things like Infect Baylor and Imperm or Widow Anchor since these cards are very prevalent in the in the format right now. Uh, Sky Striker does play Effect Baylor and Imperm right now, a lot, or at least a lot of them do online. And then a lot of the decks will play what they can afford, and etc. Uh, and then, of course, Widow Anchor is another, a searchable one of those cards, basically. Um, so the Solid Soldier is basically, like, the re that's why we have Diane. It's just to use, you know, hopefully have, like, Mass Change. Maybe we can uh, chain out. Because the, uh, for Imperm or Effect Veiler to work or resolve, the hero has to stay on the field. So basically we Mass Change it out, and then the hero is no longer there. So their effect resolves and we get the other hero which is important for you know whatever other plays we're trying to make then we got a uh, great tornado it's just a win target uh, realistically that's all he is he's just a super poly slash win target uh, just to add another hero to pop out dragos topelia this is a super poly target you know get rid of dragoon it's a pain in the ass uh, the shining <laughs> now realistically you're only going to be able to summon this card if your opponent has a light monster or if you are going to be getting rid of Sunriser because it's the only we don't really have any light heroes that we can play right now that are relevant um, you, or if you actually get out Wonder Driver here that has happened or if you want to if or if you want to experiment with a Zold you can try that too um, Acid combos with Ab Zero which is my favorite one that's why there's two of them uh, Escargo, eh, Escardio here uh, that's probably not how you say his name uh, the Dark Elemental Hero. Omni Hero is an easy card you could take out and throw in like Starving Venom. He's really just in here as a super poly target. I rarely use him uh, for anything else. Sunriser, like I said at the beginning of the video, this guy's the linchpin of the hero deck right now. Especially for the budget players because basically you only need one and then, you know, being able to get rid of monsters and then be able to keep swinging... Like literally, and and with his ability to boost all of the heroes on the field, like he's that's it's it's just all good. Searching Miracle Fusion, guaranteeing you have a further extending play. I really like that they made Elements of Hero Sunriser. This card is a really good card. <laughs> then we got Dark Law. You can't play heroes without Dark Law. You just you can't. <laughs> Uh, and then we got Mask Hero Blast, which is another back row hate card. Basically, this card's job is because he basically is a one card hate trunade at the cost of 500. So I think that's pretty useful. Um, it does um, make certain cards like like certain floodgates. Like if you get this guy out and then they flip the floodgate, well, the floodgate still goes back to the deck. So it doesn't have some of the same weaknesses. So that's kind of neat there. All right, now we're gonna. Now some of you are asking, why are you playing an invoked fusion monster? Invoked Kukaitis requires Alistair the Invoker and a water monster. This is where King of the Swamp comes in, because King of the Swamp will replace Alistair the Invoker for that one particular fusion. Now you'll have to fuse with another swamp or with a Bubble Man to make this guy. But the point of having this dragon in here is to just give us something 
that can withstand some car some of the some of the decks like sky striker uh sky striker has some uh, cards that are really annoying and heroes really have a problem fighting out of those things so that is where invoked kakaitis comes in uh it's basically oh i can't be destroyed by card effects and i can't be targeted so those are those are two very powerful effects and being able to attack while in defense mode i mean it doesn't come up very often but there are there are times where you have other budget players who will play things like mirror force and this guy gets to kind of ignore because he's in defense mode then we got deplexer oh is he's also a super poly target if you if you decide you want to go that route if you have an absolute zero on the field and your opponent has like say an alistair the invoker and some other monsters yeah you could super poly into invoked kakaitis nuke his field and then have this untargetable fusion monster so that's kind of just it doesn't happen very often but it's kind of a fun little niche trick you could do deplexer chimera another super poly target we're playing this card over the salamangrate one because that one requires salamangrates whereas there are now more competitive cyburst decks in the game than there were than just than just salad now so i feel like deplexer chimera is actually the superior fusion to make because he's just two cyburst monsters then we got Mud Dragon, another super poly target. This card also has the ability to change its attribute, which does help with the other hero monsters. So, you know, that way you're not just stuck making Ab Zero. You could also that's another way we can make the shining, by the way, if you if you absolutely had to. Oh, that's another trick I forgot to mention. A lot of some of these cards die really fast, like Deplexer. So you actually can miracle fusion it that way. But you know, just letting you guys know. And then of course you got your Wonder Driver. This is kind of it's kind of like, you know. This card feels very much like a win more card to me right now, especially for the budget variant of this deck. So there's actually still even more room you guys could do to mess with this. Um, for the budget hero players who don't have a lot of money to throw at the game, I you know I, I wanted to build a deck that I knew uh, could could keep up in its own way and then like give them another way to play play the hero deck because not all of us can afford you know a lot of these very expensive heroes and sometimes the entire it's not even just one card that's super expensive. Sometimes the whole engine collectively is just too expensive to buy. Whereas a lot of these cards have common reprints, uh, you know. So like, like literally most of this deck you can get common. The most expensive stuff that you're gonna get, have to spend money on, is gonna be the stuff in the extra deck. And even then, like you know, like I said, some of these cards have been reprinted into Oblivion, so you can make them uber cheap. Like most of these guys are. Like Sunriser, I think, might be the most expensive card in here. Um, because he hasn't been reprinted yet but he's five bucks or i think he's only been like reprinted like one or twice once more i think i can't don't quote me on that i can't quite remember <laughs> but the point that i'm getting at is i wanted to give hero players another way to play so i thought okay well let's let's go otk style we'll go we'll, we'll kind of play the way dinosaurs play in a way go second blast them you know with all these cards that are like you know board breaker cards and then swing in with you know try to get as many heroes on the field as possible especially and the be best thing you can do is try to also get as many attributes on the field as possible um i think that this guy said yeah att attributes yeah so basically if you can just throw as many different attributes on your side as you can you know you got your wind your earth you know and your light and your water and you you know and like all these various attributes you know you throw that many out there and then like this guy easily takes three heroes that normally wouldn't be enough to take the game and sunriser literally can say okay now me dark law and even uh i even won i think one game i don't know if i can't i don't know if you guys i can't remember if i put that replay on here but there was one game where that was what i won with i won with sunriser dark law and a blaze man here uh, and it was just, yeah, because he, he went up to like 2,000 points. Yeah, Sunriser really does make the difference for an OTK variant of the hero deck. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to remind you guys to check out my Teespring, you know, support the channel. It'd be great to see you guys wearing some more hero stuff. And uh, let me know if there's some anything you guys want to see me make for the Teespring. Uh, I could always use some new ideas. Um... If you're new to the Ben 10,000 Wide Joe channel, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace.